Live from the IRC Television Studios on the SUNY Oneonta campus, this is Oneonta News Now. I'm Joanna Weidenhammer. And I'm Caitlin Horrett. Before we start the news, meteorologist Matthew Miles joins us with a look at the Oneonta weather cam. Thanks, Joanna. Well, we've had a bit of a warm-up the last couple of days with a mix of a couple of showers. I'll let you know how long that's going to last after the break. Matt, coming up next, we have your campus and local news. Stay tuned to Oneonta News Now. We have a big problem, and we need your help. It's happening on college campuses, at bars, at parties, even in high schools. It's happening to our sisters and our daughters. Our wives and our friends. It's called sexual assault, and it has to stop. We have to stop it. So listen up. If she doesn't consent, or if she can't consent, it's rape, it's assault. It's a crime. It's wrong. If I saw it happening and I was taught, you have to do something about it. If I saw it happening, I speak up. If I saw it happening, I'd never blame her. I'd help her. Because I don't want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. We need all of you to be part of the solution. This is about respect. It's about responsibility. It's up to all of us to put an end to sexual assault. And that starts with you. Because one is too many. In local news, SUNY Oneonta junior and music industry major Daniel Reed had a rock star experience last week at a global music products trade show in California, which he attended for free as the winner of a prestigious scholarship. Reed and 26 other SUNY Oneonta students attended the NAMM, National Association of Music Merchants show in NAHAM, California from January 25th to the 28th. Reed was the winner of the NAMM Foundation's Competitive President's Innovation Award, a $600 stipend given each year to select college and university music students interested in exploring career opportunities in music performance and or music business. The NAMM show is a place for professionals in the music industry to explore and discover innovative new products being released in the new year. After careful deliberation, SUNY officials have recently named Barbara Jean Morris as the next president of SUNY Oneonta. Morris is the second female president of SUNY Oneonta, our first being our current president, Nancy Klinuski, who will be retiring in July after dedicating 10 years of hard work and leadership to the local campus. Morris has been provost and vice president for academic affairs at Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado since 2011. Morris said she was very excited about joining the community and described SUNY Oneonta as an inspiring institution. We look forward to welcoming Barbara Jean Morris in early July this year. Local amateur and pro chefs ladled out an array of chilies to about 450 attendees of the 14th annual Chili Bowl. The Community Arts Network of Oneonta's largest annual fundraiser handmade ceramic bowls from the Carriage House art studio behind uh, Cano's Wilbur Mansion served as tickets to the event and hungry people turned out for a spicy lunch despite a steady snowfall. I pulled her here on a sled, Meg Forster uh, Rothbart said of his six-year-old daughter Natalie, who was already a veteran of four chili bowls. A record 23 vendors offered a chili spectrum ranging from mild vegetarian to smoky salmon with a variety of more traditional recipes in between. Ostego County Law Enforcement Academy and Campus Police are in the design phase of a new building for the emergency service departments. The new single-story building will be around 9,000 square feet and costs are estimated at six million dollars. The building site is on the southern boundary of campus adjacent to a commuter parking lot uphill from the end of Clinton Street. The college began notifying residents in the Clinton Street and Ravine Parkway about the upcoming construction project as groundbreaking may begin as early as the summer of 2019. Thanks Caitlin. We have your local entertainment news when we come back. Stay tuned to Oneonta News Now. You're on your way to meet up with friends, but you can't seem to get anywhere quickly. You don't want your friends to be annoyed, so you text. You're on your way.
Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road while texting while driving. Make sure you get where you're going. We're back with your local entertainment news update with Natalie Costanza. What's going on this week on campus, Natalie? This weekend in the Red Dragon Theater, Thor Ragnarok will be showing on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6.30 and 9 p.m., along with a Sunday matinee at 1 p.m. Come watch Thor battle his formal ally, fellow Avenger, the Hulk, in a mighty gladiatorial contest. Watch to see if Thor is able to survive and prevent the all-powerful Hela from destroying the Asgardian civilization. Free food will be provided for everyone and tickets are free with all SUNY Oneonta IDs. Tickets are $3 for everyone else and go on sale 30 minutes prior to showtime. The Outdoor Adventure Club will be hosting a cross-country ski trip this Saturday, February 10th. Round trip transportation is provided and will leave campus at 10 a.m. and return at 3 p.m. Join the club as they travel to Robert V. Rydell State Park, located between Otsego and Delaware counties, for this fun winter activity. No experience is required, as the club members will teach you all you need to know about cross-country skiing. All equipment is provided. Please pre-register in advance at the Outdoor Adventure Club office, located in Holbert Hall. A refundable deposit is required to reserve your spot. Join the Greater Oneonta Historical Society this Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. at the History Center on 183 Main Street. Bob Reitmeyer, a member of the Historical Society, will lead a program about the meaning of the messages used in children's valentines from the 1930s to the 1950s. Mr. Reitmeyer will also sign copies of his book, published in 2017. Children's valentines from the 1930s to the 1960s will also be on display. Come join our local community in celebration of such a lovely upcoming holiday. Email the Society at info at oneontahistory.org or call them at 607-432-0960 for more information. If you're looking to listen to live music this weekend, you're in the right place. The Music Industry Club will be hosting Sanction, a metal hardcore band based out of Long Island, New York, opening for the group Suffering, a death metal group based out of Santiago, Chile, Selective Aggression, a metal group out of Buffalo, New York, Fence Cutter, a hardcore band out of Perth, Amboy, New Jersey, and Recycled Earth, the headliner's opener from Nyack, New York. The concert will be held on Saturday, February 10th in the Hunt Union Ballroom, with doors opening at 5.30 p.m. Pre-sale tickets are on sale now and are $3 for students and $5 for all others. Tickets are also available at the door for an upcharge of $2 per ticket. That's all for your ONN Entertainment news for this week. Back to you, Joanna. Thanks, Natalie. We have more news coming up, so stay tuned to ONN. It's on us to stop sexual assault. The It's On Us Pledge is a personal commitment to help keep men and women safe from sexual assault. It is a promise to not be a bystander to the problem, but to be a part of the solution. As a SUNY Oneonta student athlete, I am proud to take the pledge. I pledge to help keep men and women safe from sexual assault. I promise not to be a bystander to the problem, but a part of the solution. I pledge to recognize that non-consensual sex is sexual assault. To identify situations in which sexual assault may occur. To intervene in situations where consent cannot or has not been given. To create an environment in which sexual assault is unacceptable and survivors are supported. Join us and take the pledge at itsonus.org. I pledge to help stop sexual assault. In one of the most touching sports moments of the year, a young woman with autism drained her first career shot during a high school basketball game against a rival school. Kristen Swouse, a student at Christian County High School in Kentucky, has developed a close bond with Ladaria Gold, a senior girls basketball player who serves as a student aide in um, Showhouse's gym class. Gold invited Showhouse to participate in her team's senior night ceremony held on Friday. Showhouse was made an honorary team captain against Hopkinsville, one of Christian County's biggest rivals. At the start of the game, Showhouse received a pass from Gold and took the game's first shot attempt and the first official shot attempt of her career. It swished through the net and the crowd went crazy. 
YouTube star Kobe Pearson decided to fill large potholes in New York City after popping a tire from driving through one. The only catch is he decided to fill the potholes with plants ranging from flowers, houseplants, and even trees while filming for YouTube. The prankster says, would you rather hit a big pothole or drive around a plant? However, the New York City Department of Transportation wasn't laughing. Their commentary on his actions was that, aside from putting himself in harm's way, person's tree planting is putting other people on the road in danger. A Kansas City man received life-changing bone marrow from an anonymous NFL player, and now he's heading to the Super Bowl to meet him for the first time. After years of aches and pains, chemo treatments, and visits to the doctor, Roy Co. remembers the day a donor came forward for a bone marrow transplant. For two years after the transplant, Co. often wondered who the donor was on Tuesday. The mystery was finally solved. Staff at the University of Kansas Cancer Center revealed to Co. that the donor is an NFL player. While the player's identity still remains a secret, Co. will have a chance to meet the donor this week during a special trip to Minneapolis for the Super Bowl. He probably saved my life, Co. told the local news. I think I owe him a big OL. Thank you for that at the very least. Co is scheduled to meet the NFL player on Wednesday to receive his ticket to the big game. That is something I did not expect, he said. I never expected in my life to ever go to the Super Bowl. Democratic Senator Kristen Gillibrand petitioned the Department of Justice to investigate the U.S. Olympic Committee for failing to take action on reports of Larry Nassar's abuses and if the mishandling of reports had violated the law. The former USA Gymnastics team doctor was recently sentenced up to 175 years in prison after over 150 women have said in court that they have been abused by NASA over the past two decades. In a letter addressed to Attorney General Jeff Sessions, Senator Gellibrand asked to the extent to which other parties have failed their duty and should be held responsible for their contribution to Dr. Nasser's crimes. Thanks, Caitlin. When we come back, Matthew Miles will take a look at your five-day weather forecast. Stay with us. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the, the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us. All of us to, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Let's find out what the weather has in store for us this week with our meteorologist, Matthew Miles. Thanks, Caitlin. Well, you see, we had a bit of a warm up lately, and we're going to get into how long that's going to last in a couple of minutes. But let's talk about the high for today. It was around 40 degrees. We saw some rain. Throughout the day, we still got about a 90% chance of rain. For the remainder of the night, about 2 a.m., I expect it to sort of wind down and uh, then pick up later on tomorrow. But we have a southwest wind of about 7 miles per hour. Um, and as we get into tonight, we're going to see about a low of 38 degrees, which is sort of reasonable for this time of year. It's actually on the higher end uh, with about a 20% chance of rain and wind speed from the south about seven to nine miles per hour. So a good night for ladies night, um, Valentine's Day. Anybody that's going out, it's a little warmer. Enjoy it before it gets a little colder out. In terms of the high for tomorrow, 51 degrees. So good to crack out those shorts. There's gonna be a chance for some rain in the morning. I expect that to end about 11 a.m. So mostly cloudy for the remainder of the day, but the wind will be a little higher, about 8 to 13 miles per hour from the southwest. But all in all, it should be a nice day for this time of the year um, because we don't get very many 50 degree days. But we can look, Binghamton's at 53, Oneonta 51, back at Albany 51, Syracuse 41, Buffalo 48, and then down in Jamestown, yes, 57 degrees is actually the high for tomorrow as there's a warm front that's coming through along those lines. And then down in New York City, about 63 degrees. So anybody that's homesick and, you know, their friends are back home taking pictures down in the island and all that, they're going to be a little warmer than us. But it's definitely something to enjoy. And tomorrow night's low is about 40 degrees. So Thirsty Thursday is still cracking out some good numbers as well for temps. About 70% chance of showers. I'm expecting that time frame to be between 9 p.m. and about 1 a.m. 
um, where the increment of rain is going to be increased at a southwest wind about 7 to 10 miles per hour. And if we look at our five-day outlook, we saw the 40 degrees, the 50 degrees, and then we get to Friday. And we have a high of about 40, but we're going to drop down all the way to 14 degrees as a low. And then we're getting back into our 30s, 20s, and then for a Sunday, again in the 30s, and then back in the 20s. But that's all I have for this week. Back to you guys. Thanks, Matthew. Former USA Olympic gymnastics and Michigan State University sport medicine doctor Larry Nasser was sentenced on Monday to 40 to 125 years in prison for criminal sexual conduct toward underage girls at a gymnastic facility. The sentence was announced in the Eaton County Circuit Court in Charlotte, Michigan at the end of a sentencing hearing in which the N60 young women and teenagers read for presented victim impact statements. The sentence was based on Dr. Nasser's guilty plea to three counts of criminal sexual conduct back in November. Two against, uh, two against girls between the ages of 13 and 15 and the other younger than 13. The sentencing marks the end of weeks of statements made by approximately 265 young women and girls who said they were sexually abused by Dr. Nasser under the guise of medical treatment. Last month, over 150 of them publicly confronted Nasser during a seven-day hearing in Ingham County Circuit Court in Lansing. Among them were Olympic athlete, uh, athletes Ali Raisman and Jordan Weber. Nasser was sentenced to 40 to 175 years after that hearing and 60 for a conviction related to child pornography in a separate federal case. Both sentences will be served concurrently after the child pornography sentence. Two Amtrak employees are dead and 116 people are injured after a Miami, Florida bound train crashed in South Carolina on Sunday. The train collision is the fourth fatal incident involving an Amtrak train since the start of December. According to CNN, the train, which is traveling from New York to Miami, collided with a freight train around 2.35 a.m. in Case, South Carolina. The crash left thousands of gallons of oil spilled at the scene and the passengers' injuries range from minor scratches to broken bones. According to Lexington County's spokesperson, Harrison Cahill, the two victims were identified as 54-year-old engineer Michael Kempf and 32-year-old conductor Michael Sella. The crash comes several days after an Amtrak train carrying Republican members of Congress hit a garbage truck in Virginia and killed one of the truck's passengers and another crash on December 18th when an Amtrak train ran off the rails along a curve during its inaugural run a, a route of Tacoma. Washington, killing three people and injuring dozens. A two-year-old girl was found dead in Akron, Ohio, after her mother found her outside in freezing weather on the family's front porch Friday afternoon. The mother, who was not identified, frankly call, frantically called 911 and said her daughter was, quote, freezing. The dispatcher was able to talk to her through CPR until paramedics arrived at the home around 3.30 p.m. The child was taken to Akron Children's Hospital, where she was later pronounced dead. Temperatures in Akron on Friday ranged between 12 and 19 degrees. Ohio police are currently investigating how the girl died and have not identified her or her mother. Stay tuned to ONN for your weekly sports update with Lenny Ortiz. Welcome back to Oneonta News Now. Lenny, what's going on in sports this week? Well, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to sports, so let's get right to it. 
Down goes Brady. Down goes Brady. The underdog Philadelphia Eagles upset the defending champion New England Patriots 41-33 Sunday night to win their first ever Super Bowl. The Eagles were an underdog in Super Bowl 52 as the NFC squad led an untested coach with only two years on the brains and a backup quarterback, 29-year-old Nick Foles, who had never won a playoff game before this season. New England, at most betting outlets, was favored to win by four and a half points. Foles was thrusted into the starting role after MVP contender Carson Wentz was lost for the season when he suffered a torn ACL and LCL in Week 14 win over the Los Angeles Rams. On Sunday, Foles was the marksman, completing 28 of 43 passes for 373 yards and three touchdowns. He also became the first quarterback in Super Bowl history to also catch a touchdown pass en route to becoming the game's MVP. The Eagles joined the 2012 New England Giants as the only team to defeat the Patriots in a Super Bowl in the 21st century. The Chicago Bears crushed New England 46 to 10 in Super Bowl 20 and in, 19, in 1986. They brought down the champion Patriots. Philadelphia police didn't seem to prognosticate the win. Officers were seen greasing traffic light poles in the city of brotherly love to prevent people from climbing, uh, from climbing the, the light poles. Congratulations to the Eagles. Staying in the NFL, Ray Lewis, Randy Moss, Terrell Owens, Brian Dawkins, and Brian Erlacher are the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2018. The Hall of Fame's board of selectors met last Saturday, the day before the Super Bowl, to select the class. The 15 finalists were trimmed down to 10 and then to 5. Lewis was the most decorated of the group as a 13-time Pro Bowl selection, a two-time Defensive Player of the Year, and a Super Bowl MVP. In his career as a Baltimore Ravens linebacker, Lewis said, quote, I've been going a long time and now I can finally rest. I want to go fishing with a cigar now and just sit back. I don't want to work out every day now. Also, Randy Moss, who played for five teams in his career, is second all-time in touchdown receptions with 156 and had eight 1,200-yard seasons in his career. He played seven full seasons as part of another in Minnesota, site of Super Bowl, Sunday Super Bowl. Moss said, quote, the door knocked and I got started and I started getting excited. He was regarded Hall of Fame President David Baker alerting him he has been elected. All the emotions caught the best of me because it's been a long journey and it ends in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Tears of joy in the days leading up to Saturday's selection meeting. Some wondered if Erlacher would be chosen in the same class as Lewis, as two high profile players at the same position in largely the same era. The athleticism and production of the former Chicago Bears middle linebacker tipped the scales. Erlacher was an eight-time Pro Bowl selection and the league's Defensive Player of the Year in 2005. Owens, a finalist for the th past three years, has been a hot-button candidate with his own public criticisms of the board of selectors after he had not been chosen for the Hall in 2016 or 2017. Winter is coming. The Winter Olympics, that is. The Winter Olympics is starting this Friday and runs all the way through the 25th of this month. The Winter Olympics is, being, is currently being held in South Korea this year. The 2018 Winter Olympics will feature 102 events in 15 sports, making it the first Winter Olympics to surpass 100 medal events. Four new dis disciplines in existing sports were introduced to the Winter Olympic program, including big air snowboarding, mixed doubles curling, mass start speed skating, and mixed team alpine skiing. For the first time in 1998, the National Hockey League will not provide accommodations, including a break in the season for all teams during the Olympics to allow its players to participate in the men's hockey, ice hockey tournament. The games will be once again be broadcasted by NBC under a long-term contract with NBC Universal. It will be NBC's first Olympics without longtime primary host Bob Costas, who announced on 7th of February in 2007 his retirement from the role in favor of Mike Tirico. Hopefully USA can bring home some medals. Join us again next time for your up-to-date news, sports, weather, and more. I'm Caitlin Horrett. And I'm Joanna Weinhammer. This is Oneonta News Now. Have a great night.